right here before us. This table that represents your love. It's a covenant of love that you said, I've loved you with an everlasting love. And I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. We're here to say your love never fails us, God. We believe in your love here this morning. Your love is holy. Your love is holy this morning, God. You are holy.
in faith, we declare that our God is good and he's working all things together for good to those that love him and are called according to his purposes. We believe in you, God. We believe in your mercies that are new every morning. We believe that your love is never ending and never failing.
And uh, you never want to stop those medications unless the doctor tells you. Because it could be really dangerous. But anyway, I'm free from medication, free from side drugs, free from mental hospitals. And um, so I just give all the praise and all the glory to God because he was the one that brought deliverance. And um, so I've forgiven my father and I've forgiven my uh, brother and all of the other things that happened in my life. Because I do honestly believe that forgiveness is very, very important. And we can't receive healing and restoration without forgiveness. All right. I'm going to try to make this as quick as possible because I know there might be a lot of, uh, a lot of testimonies that people want to hear. Uh, but it, on a good Friday, I was down here and I was like, wait the sign outside. Is this coming through? Okay, it's breaking up. I thought this one. Yeah, that's good. The pastor's mind is always too strong. <laughs> Anyway, but uh, so uh, yeah, April 5th, he comes down here. I don't know, I think it was the third of the day, but good Friday was. And uh, wasn't feeling real good, you know. And, uh, Sandy had noticed it, James had noticed it. Uh, they said, You feeling okay? I said, Well, not really. You know, I'm kind of lethargic and kind of woozy, and I'm not really thinking straight. My mind is kind of weird today. So James grabs me, James back here, grabs me by the arm. He says, he, you know, he did some checks on me. He says, we're going to take you to the hospital. <laughs> so thank God he did because they found all kinds of problems with me. You know, uh, had some liver issues and some, some sugar issues, some diabetic issues. And, uh, of course, I've been on some medication, high blood pressure medication. Uh, but... Uh, Kind of a long story short, uh, got taken care of in the hospital and kept seeing my doctor. And uh, just me, I was able to, God got me off the high blood pressure medication. Uh, the last visit I had, he took me off the diabetes medication. So I'm trying to, trying to do a little better. Uh, I still got, still got a ways to go, but uh, I just want to glorify God. And, because I know it's all him, you know. I can feel it in my body, and uh, I call him Daddy. I call him God. Daddy. I call him, you know, all that gets to me is Daddy. And, uh, so my Daddy did take care of me. Amen. And uh, I just I know he'll do the same for everyone. You know, if he did it for a bum like me, you know, he's gonna he'll do it for everybody. Just gotta let him do it and trust him in it. And uh, you know, that's it. Just. Uh, let go and let God. And uh, He will. He will come through. Just like His Word says. Uh, his Word is... <laughs> I can't find any fault in it, so it's, it's very, very true. Okay, who's, who's next? Okay. Well, I just want to introduce David, his wife, Jean. Stand up, Jean. Again, I want you guys to get to know these people. And then as we do church, it's about getting to know each other. When we partake of the Lord's Supper, it really is about a deeper uh, relationship with God. And that relationship with God should lead to a deeper relationship with others. That's what you call relational Christianity. So God is, is doing great things in this man. I want you to encourage him. He's a wonderful musician. He's a worshiper of God, his wife, their daughter, son-in-law, Zach, they are faithful people, and we are just so blessed that you guys are here and Thank allowing God to do what he's doing in your life. We love you guys. Thank you so much. And if you feel led that you just want to congregate, how many have felt just like nobody cares about me at church? I just slip in and slip out, nobody knows. I want you to feel free to just come introduce yourself. I want you 
This is now my family. To partake of this is to say, I'm going to put down some roots. This is going to become my family. I'm going to make my life known. I'm going to let other people know me. We're going to learn to love one another as Christ loved each other. Amen. Amen. This, this man is just an amazing man. God's doing great things. Morning. Uh, I just want to thank Pastor Brad and his wife and uh, the elders here, Cheryl and Bob, and the men's team and all the friends I've made and the prayer team and all the support that you guys have shown me um, in my life. It's been, you know, needless to say, a blessing. Um, I thank God for you guys and all your prayers and your thoughts and your cares and hugging me and shaking my hand and just all the little things. Um, but um, in a nutshell, um, this is just an awesome praise report for me in my life. But uh, um, I'm one year sober, and I'm 34 years old. And uh, it's the first time I've been sober for a whole year since I was 14 years old. Um, and uh, this last year has been like the best. And, uh, I'm not going to cry. <laughs> Uh, this past year has been like the best year and like the worst year of my life. Um, at a young age, I felt drawn to the Lord. Um, and a lot of Christians say, you know, like I remember the day I gave my life to the Lord. It was like December 5th, 1975 in a rainstorm or whatever. <laughs> and, uh, from honest to God's truth, I, I've never felt like I, I've always felt like I believed in Jesus. I can't remember not believing in Jesus and I attribute that to my grandma who raised me in a non-denominational Christian church since I was little. And I don't ever not remember believing in Jesus. Um, having said that, um, when I entertain the world and the secular world and drugs and alcohol, you know, the enemy is very real. And uh, I went down a path for 19, 20 years of my life that I honestly, God, I don't wish on my worst enemy because addiction is one of the worst things here, and I'm sure some of us in here are addicted to something, whether it's drugs and alcohol, or sex, or money, or power, or whatever, or just obsession, but uh, especially, I want to share this for the youth and the young people, because it's, it's, it's not a joke, it's not a game. Drugs and alcohol can take you down a path that is, that, like I said, it's just a dark path, and it's a lie, and there's no hope at the end of it. And uh, for 20 years, I struggled being an addict who loved the Lord and quitting and stopping and going to church and stopping. And my life has just been a battle, you know, like all of ours is. And uh, I stand before you guys today here, basically someone who loves the Lord and who's a sinner and is broken. And I'm still a sinner and I'm still broken, you know, because I got sober for a year doesn't mean I'm better or I'm holy or I've reached this place. The Lord's awesome, and he gave me this vision of a glacier. And um, a glacier, I don't know if you know, but it's like a chunk of ice, of course, that sticks above the ocean. And the part that we can see is actually a small small part of a huge chunk of ice that's under the ocean that you can't see. And the Lord showed me that my addiction is just that glacier, that little part that's floating above the ocean that we can see. And once that, the Lord started working on me with that this last year of my life, He's revealed to me a whole mess of stuff underneath the ice that my addiction is stemming out of. So my addiction was my way as a sinner and a human trying to make sense and deal with life, you know, to make myself feel better or normal or whatever. And the Lord's now revealing to me these deeper underlying problems of hurt and pain and fear and anger that this stems out of. And like I said, I don't, you know, I have a long way to go, but the Lord's never left me and he's always kept me in. And I know the next, there's a nut, more, more to the ice to take away this next year and then the next year and the next year, you know, and uh, all I know is that I love the Lord and I know when I got, this is going to be over and this struggle that we all go through, it'll be over, you know, and it's okay to mess up and be sinners and go through hurt and go through pain and go through good times and go through bad times because that's what this life is, you know. But like Pastor Brad has taught me and shown me and everyone in the church, it's just, it's all about 
what he did on the cross. Amen. And no man or woman can take it away or erase it. When Jesus was on the cross, I love it, he said, it's finished. And it's finished. There's nothing left for us to do or not do or give to the poor or not give to the poor. He saved us. And when you start to realize that love, you just inherently want to do what he's calling you to do. For me, it was getting rid of my addiction to drugs and alcohol. That's what I know God wanted me to do. And every single one of you in here right now, if you're at a point in your life, or whatever point, that you know he wants you to do or not do something. And then that's how it just keeps going. And that chunk of ice can be taken out in the next and the next. So thank you guys again so much. It's an honor to be here and an honor to be part of the congregation and get to teach the kids and stuff. Thank you so much. I love you guys. Stephen and I have been meeting for, for months now. Stephen was always telling me, Brad, I've never experienced this level before. I always come to a certain point, and at this point, it's so uncomfortable, I end up going backwards. You know, like, you know, I've never come to this point, but I want God, I love God, and I want to go forward. Amen? Is that right? Amen. Amen? Yeah. And so I just have no encouragement. His love will never fail you, yes. Stephen. His love will never fail you. You can be sure if you'll take that next step. Amen? He's got your back. He's got you covered. You're covered in the blood. And you can trust your life to Him. And now God's unfolded many new things for you. And, but that was a real testimony of just you taking that next step. And I bring this because God is calling all of us to take that next step. Amen? And Stephen was always telling me, but I, I don't know what that, that step looks like. I don't know where I'm going. It's very uncomfortable, right? Yeah, amen. But in faith, we go forward. Yes, yes. It's by faith that we go forward. Yes. And I'm just so proud of this young man. I want you to get to know this man. I want you to encourage him in his walk. Because I believe he's called of the Lord. He's yep. called and chosen to just be a great testimony of the power of the life of God, amen, the mercy of God, the forgiveness of God. The devil would like to take him out. But he's here standing strong because his trust is in the name of the Lord. And God's continuing to do great and mighty things. Stephen Forrest, give him a hand. Thank you. And I see their hearts, and I see them 
coming to God. And some of them you see over and over and over again. And you see little by little them changing. And you see their hearts and they love on you and they see you coming and they get all excited. And it's not just me they're excited to see. <laughs> Those are the people that love the Lord. People look and they recognize us and they say, those are God's people. To be known as a child of God by somebody and say, that's somebody that loves Jesus. That's somebody that loves God. That is the greatest honor of all of my life for somebody to recognize me for that. And I can come to them with open arms regardless of Anything. It doesn't matter. And I love and I hug on them. And years, a few years ago, I'll tell you, I wouldn't have done that. But God has changed my heart to love you and love them. And when you start loving and sharing the Lord, all of a sudden, things change. Step out of your comfort zone. That's what I tell you guys. More than anything. Step out and love. As Jesus loved. And it's the unlovable, those that are hurt, lost, downtrodden, because we were all there. We were all one of those people. I was messed up just as much. But God stayed on me and He loved me. He sent people to love me. I got to say thank you to you, Pastor Brad. You've been an encouragement to me. You've always. <laughs> You've always told me, Nick, you're a good man. Nick, I thank you for what you do. You've always made me feel part of the family. And I thank you for that. And I thank that for a lot of you. Ben and Liz, I love you guys so much. And uh, I have a, a friend here today, but my buddy Anthony, I've known since I was a little kid. And uh, we grew up together in He's a man that's helped me at times guide me to the Lord and back on the path that I needed to be. And I, I love you, Tony. Uh, but and there's so many people here. Stephen, <clears throat> I'm so proud of you. Thank you, Pastor Brad. Thank you, everybody here. It's another area, Nick, that you, know, you talked about getting the other day. You looked at me and said, you know, I struggled in that area for many years. It's a Christian. He's been a Christian for many, many years, but a struggle. And it's, it's a struggle for obedience. Can you share just real quickly what God's done here? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's, you know, it's funny. I, all of us here, it's easy for us to say, Jesus, thank you. I, I trust you with my my heart, I know I'm going to heaven, Lord. You're my Savior. But Lord, yeah, it's kind of hard to give you this dollar. <laughs> really? <laughs> Think about that. Really? It's that hard? We're trusting Him with our salvation. We're trusting Him that He's gonna, His promises are all going to come true. We trust Him for all these things. But then it's hard just to get in there and pull that dollar out. You know, and that, that was a big fat fight for me, you know. I would do it real good for a while, and then I'd be like, ah, I, can't, I don't have the money. Uh, wait a minute. And I started to see things in the physical, not in the spiritual. And we, are, we need to walk in the spirit. And we need to say, God, you've made promises. And my Lord is faithful in every one of those promises. You know, and he is. And now it's it's not a struggle. Matter of fact, I got I chased this guy. And I said, here, here, here it is. Can we wait till Sunday? No, I can't. No, no. I can't wait till Sunday. I got it now. I don't trust myself. I still don't trust myself. If I got it, here it is. You know, I'm not waiting till Sunday. You know? Don't wait. And that's the way you should feel. You keep you gotta just be like, I can't wait to give it to the Lord. I can't wait to this for God. Let me do this. Let me go out and minister. Let me go out and share Jesus. Everything. Giving is beyond just money. It's everything in what we do. 
to me, and I've always said this, I've said this to Brad over and over again, love is the act of giving. It is an action word, and we do that by giving, by sharing. Sharing our love, sharing what we have, and that's it, you know? Amen. Thank you. Amen. Real quick again. <laughs> Quicker than last time. No. Um, I gotta say this because I know it's of God. See? And uh, I was at work for about a year. Yeah, I had unemployment and stuff, and it, it just we got so far behind. So far behind. So we're, we're I was in not as bad as Nick's case, but real close. I mean, you know, we're ready to lose a house, the car. We only have one car. What are we gonna do with lose the car? Walk. Um, anyway, our mortgage company's been, been working with us to keep our house for that year. They gave us these programs. We had to borrow this pass and put it uh, uh, to the rear of the loan and stuff like that. <laughs> and the lady tells me, you can't do that no more. You've already exhausted all the, all the favors you can get from us. I said, well, anyway, they wanted to... Uh, we're kind of getting back on our feet. I've got full-time work now, and, uh, and, uh, and I've been giving. That's that. I've been able to give, because <laughs> I have something to give, because God's blessed me with it. And uh, I really attribute this to, to the giving, because um, this could have only been God. Um, I was talking with my mortgage lady, and she was one $1,922 a month for the next six months for us to get caught up on what we got behind on. And I got to thinking, I thought, well, okay, I might, I might be able to squeeze that out with the work I've done. No I can't do it. <laughs> After I wrote it down on paper, I said, I called her back, I said, I'm sorry, I can't do that. I don't have, like a credit report shows that you've got an $1,100 surplus. And I said, well, there's a lot of things that, aren't, that we pay for that aren't showing up on credit. And so, we don't really have that eleven hundred dollars to So anyway, um, so I called her back and I said, you know, if there's anything else, she says, well, in her words, in her words, this was funny. She says, well, we can roll the dice. I said, oh, okay, then roll the dice. <laughs> what, what other chance do I have to keep in my house? So, uh, so she says, uh, called her back, called her back, and. Uh, she, uh, or she called me while I was driving. And uh, now they only want $850 a month, and it, our first payment don't even start until December. <laughs> so that's how much we got you. Today. Christmas Eve 2007. 
Um, and it was like a total change, and I was like telling her, my best friend, I said, God, why do we keep saying, whoa, 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 later, whoa, later. I said, and then uh, we were like, I was so on fire, I was like, wow, where do I sign up for things to do? <laughs> and you know, they have, uh, in the schools, they have those trays with like little pockets, you know, the food goes in there. And we signed up, I signed up for a homeless ministry, intercessory prayer, prison ministry, and all kinds of, it's like, you know how when they say, you have too much stuff on your plate? Well, I had a lot of stuff on my tray. <laughs> and uh, people would tell me, you're going to burn out, you're going to burn out. I'm like, no, I'm not. God's going to give me strength. God's going to give me strength. And so we, um, we started doing prison ministry, intercessory prayer, homeless ministry. And we were, when we looked at it, we were at church seven days a week, doing things in Word as well, and just, we were just like always there doing stuff, but it felt like we never got tired. You know, we just kept on loving people, serving people, and it's like, and he does give you the strength. And um, now, well, since 2007, and we're still serving the Lord. We're still um, praying for people in Walmart aisles, um, you know, because they knew, because we would always tell them, if you ever need anything, if you see us anywhere, we need prayer, tell us. And we pray in parking lots, and, you know, just people, hey, or they'll text in 3 in the morning, can you pray with me? And then I'm trying to pray, trying to stay away. But, um, so we're always open for anybody, whoever needs prayer. Um, anything, come pick me up. I'm stuck over here at 2 in the morning. I'm rescuing people. And, you know, just because I have the love of Christ. And I do it for him. And he gets all the glory. Yes. Overjoyed to have you have a savior. You're a blessing. 
your answer to prayer. So thank you guys for your love and for your service. Amen. Who's next? AJ? Everybody give a warm welcome. <laughs>
this precious woman of God right here, Regina, she just got such a heart, a heart for God. Uh, I haven't fully gotten to know her, but I'm going to get to know her a little bit more. I want you to get to know her, know her heart. We're just blessed by you, Regina. Michael has been coming on Sundays as well, and Mondays for, excuse me, Saturday mornings with the ministry. And who is God? An amazing heart for the Lord. He's just a real kindred spirit. I'm so excited now what God's doing. He's doing wonderful things here. We just celebrate with you all. And we're just so blessed by you. Thanks for being here. Thank you for